If I do this, it'll probably get worse. <laughs> mm. We were a little bit stressed out. <laughs> Where are we gonna deliver this baby? Everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it may be where you are. I wanted to sit down and at least record the birth story of our second little baby here, Miss Isla. She is two months old, so it's a few months back now. I'm not sure if I remember everything quite clearly. And I wasn't really sure if I wanted to, but now I think about it, you know, with my first, with our first son, we did a lot of pictures, a lot of recording videos when we were in the hospital and when he was born. This time we didn't really do anything. <laughs> we recorded for maybe a minute on the way down. After that, that was it. There was no, we didn't even think about turning on the camera. So, I wanted to record this. If not for anyone who's interested in hearing a birth story, then even just for my memory, because it was such a very special day for us. See, so if, if I do this, it'll probably get worse. Let's see. You want to lay down like this? <laughs> to preface the story, we live, no, okay, let's, let's go even further back. <laughs> Where we live right now, we were going to a doctor just in the next town over. So that's about 30 minutes away from where we are right now. And we were planning on delivering at the hospital in that town. Well, maybe our third appointment in, mm -hmm. it became news that the hospital is no longer delivering babies. And so... <clears throat> We were a little bit stressed out. <laughs> Where are we gonna deliver this baby? I was not interested in doing a home birth. Our first baby, how did you say? He had jaundice. And, we and there had were to, other complications. Yeah, too. and there were other complications as well with the delivery. And so we had to be in the hospital for about five days after he was born. So after that, when we were pregnant with this one, I knew that I most likely was going to experience something or at least that was in my head so I was planning we have to go to the hospital for this birth now the hospital that was closest to us was no longer delivering babies so what are we gonna do the OB that I was seeing they gave me a list of doctors around like further away whatever Big news up in this neck of the woods Ugh. anyway we found a OB clinic almost two hours away if you know like I've been watching our other videos or watching his construction videos, a lot of the time back in the summer, he was saying like, oh, I have to drop everything. I have to lose a whole day because we have to drive all the way down mm -hmm. two hours because we were having to do monthly appointments, then every two weeks. And then every week. And then every week we were driving a lot. And two the hours hospital, one way, four hours round trip. So essentially a whole day is lost. Yeah. And then the hospital was down yeah. there too. Right. Now my first, delivery my water broke first we were 10 right minutes from the hospital and you know my water broke i was able to get to the hospital quickly and handle it this time they always say your second labor goes faster than your first at least that's what people told me so i was nervous that when i go into labor will i have enough time to make it to the hospital two hours away if my water doesn't break first how will I know when it's time to go? So that I, was, I was nervous about all kinds of things. I was nervous about our farm, leaving our farm. I was nervous about leaving my son. My son came two weeks early. We thought that this one was gonna come early and then she didn't. She took forever to come. Finally, on August 12th, after how many weeks? Maybe three weeks of contractions. Yeah, like, a little over three weeks, I think yeah, it was. <laughs> I think you would call it prodromal labor, where, you know, I was having contractions and they were pretty regular. I would have them in the mornings, about 20 minutes apart, and as the day progressed, they would get closer and closer, down to almost four minutes apart, and they were pretty intense sometimes. 
and then I would go to sleep and there would be no baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was going on for a while and it's tiring and you're constantly thinking like is it coming is it coming it didn't <sighs> it ended up being that the girl we had here uh, watching our farm for when we went into labor had to leave because <laughs> the time we had arranged for her to be here had passed so we had to come up with a different plan. And it was stressful. It was stressful. My mom ended up being able to watch my son and the farm. We worked it all out. And the day that our farmhand left is the day that it started going down. Yeah. She was like sitting in the kitchen and the contractions got super bad. And I was like, oh man, she's going to have this baby on our kitchen floor. Like no joke. I <laughs> totally thought that you were going to have the baby here. Really? Yes. I feel like it wasn't. No, the look on your face. <laughs> I saw the look on your face. And you were like, it's coming. <laughs> and I honestly, I was so stressed out leading up to the baby coming. Like, just wanting her to come out already. And with all, everything else going on, the build. I'm sure that had something to do with things taking yeah. forever. I even asked the midwife. I ended up seeing a midwife. I asked her, do you think that me being stressed out about everything going on in our farm and having people watch and worrying that something's going to go wrong, do you think that that is holding me back from letting myself go into labor? And she said, yep. I was able to kind of let go when I just decided, okay, my mom's going to just take care of everything and I'm going to chill out. That day, it just my body let me Ooh. go into labor. That morning, or yeah, that morning, middle of the night, I woke up with some contractions. I didn't know that's what they were. I thought I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I got up in the middle of the night, went to the bathroom. I didn't have to do anything. And then the pain went away. So I went back to lay down. Then I got another one, woke me up again. I still thought that maybe I just had like gas or something. And the pain went away. So I went back to sleep. Then, after I woke up in the morning... Danny, you want to come and be on camera? This is our wonderful family. <laughs> no, gentle, she's asleep. Gentle, she's asleep. So, Use morning comes, I wake up, I decide that I want to go um, walk through kind of our farm chores, our morning chores with my mom. So I go down there, you know, I kind of show her where all the feed is, what we, how much we feed everybody. I water everyone. I, this was a, something that I really wanted to make sure that I did. I remember telling our friends, I want to be doing farm chores the day that I go into labor so that I, I want to feel like one of those cool moms. <laughs> like I was oh, working, so cool. <laughs> I was working on the farm and then I had my baby. <laughs> so I went out there and I did my farm chores. I was getting contractions and I knew by then like, hmm, these, these cramps are coming kind of regularly. And I started to remember like, ah, uh, yes, this is the feeling. This I recognize. As the morning went on, they were getting stronger. They were probably about like 13 minutes apart. I think as soon as they left, at like what time? Like 10? Yeah, they left. They left around, no, 9. 9. Yes, nine. They, it was So nine. my mom <clears throat> took our farm hand to go drop her off and meet. A couple hours away. Yeah, a couple hours away. When they left, things started picking up a lot faster. So they were kind of like far, far and few in between, but they were still painful enough. They left and it was like. <sighs> it was 10 minutes. Instantly. It was like, they, they probably didn't even make it to the end of the road. <laughs> yep, that's your track. Yeah, they probably didn't even make it to the end of the road, and I, that's yeah. That's when I was like, "Oh man, you might have this baby here in the kitchen." <laughs> so I told him, "Okay, I'm gonna go take a shower, see if that calms things down." And he was like getting food ready. He was gonna eat something. He just told me like, "When you say it's time to go, we'll go." And I just didn't know when it was time to go. You know the five one one rule. How does that apply when you have to drive two hours? right? How do I know when is the right time to go? So I went to go take a shower and I just started getting ready for the hospital. I got all of my whatever I wanted to wear to down to the hospital. I got my hair braided. And it was about half hour 40 minutes from the time your mom left to the time we left. I very distinctly remember how quickly it happened. So I said, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we had Daniel with us. We left. We called everyone we knew, said, okay, we're going to the hospital, it's time. On the drive, we made it. The drive was intense, but not as intense as I thought it was gonna be. Your scale of pain level? I don't know. It's gonna get a whole lot worse, so let's say it's like a five. No, is that too generous? Okay. It's I don't know. Like 
The look on your face before <laughs> was not a five. We got to the hospital. They had gone from like... Hospital. Yeah, we went to the hospital. We're going to party. Oh, oh we're we? going to go party? Okay. <laughs> Fun. So the contractions from the time we left the house down to the hospital, they had gone from like 10, 13 minutes apart to three to five minutes That's apart. Our... We went and got lunch because I wanted Arby's. <laughs> yeah. And so we got Daniel some Arby's too. And instead of going directly into the hospital, we pulled into our parking spot and I got out and started feeding Daniel his little Arby's sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> and I then... was not hungry. Yeah. And then what happened as I was halfway through feeding him yeah. his sandwich. Oh, yeah. He was feeding him and I was like, hmm, something's gushing. <laughs> so I just thought like, oh, maybe like something's squeezing real hard in there. I don't know. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, we were literally sitting in our parking spot in the hospital parking lot. It turns out that yeah, turned the water out. broke. <laughs> we, when we finally made it into the hospital, we walked in. I was trying to breathe through contractions. They're trying to check me in. They're like, okay, just breathe through this one. You don't have to answer these questions until you're, this one's done. We get into triage. They say, okay, well, let's just check to see if, if your waters have broken. And I said, I don't think they have. Like, I didn't, it didn't feel at all like the first time. They checked and they said, yep, your waters have broken. So anyway, they checked and they said that I was a three. Mind you, I was a three for, uh 20 hours oh yeah well last time i was, a, last time I was no. a three forever to hear that i was still at a three was disappointing and it made me nervous so we went in to our room we started getting settled the on-call midwife came in and she said so what are we thinking for pain control for pain management and i said i'm not against an epidural i'm just gonna see how long I can take this because I wanted labor to not last as long as my first which was 26 hours. So we started kind of like just doing some different positions and breathing. My mom came back from dropping off our farm hand and she picked up Daniel. They went home and it was time to get going. It was pretty fast from there I think. It was getting really intense. They moved me over to the bath and that felt pretty good for a while. I was really of the mindset of trying to not fight the pain they were so close together they were intense but i they weren't as intense as i had remembered i was really trying to just breathe through them not fight breathe with the contractions just let them bring me closer to my baby i was squeezing you pretty hard huh the midwife said like i noticed you like to squeeze <laughs> so she gave me two combs to squeeze as hard as i could but that wasn't even enough after that i had to like I was grabbing, even the midwife, I was grabbing her neck with my arms and squeezing as hard as I yeah. could. She's crazy. <laughs> but that really helped. Doing that helped more than any other kinds of positions or whatever. But there was a point where the contractions went from, I can breathe through this, to, ow, that, that she, hurt. So she also bruised my legs <laughs> right above my knees. When I was sitting on a stool in front of her on... And she was on the bed mm -hmm. facing me and her, she was gripping her toes into <laughs> the top well up right above my knees wherever the, that's the base of your quad your quads yeah <laughs> i literally had bruises that's on the base of my quads from her toes digging <laughs> into me because she was pushing and, and squeezing, squeezing that hard yeah. that was just from her curling her toes into my legs and i remember <laughs> saying like i'm so sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry and the midwife was like it's okay, I've been beaten up real bad before. <laughs> yeah, we had a really good group of midwives as well. Yeah, they were really awesome. The midwife that delivered our baby was awesome. She was really, really cool. So anyway, there was a point when I was in the bath where it was just like, okay, that was it. I can't, I can't do any more of this. Sign me up. Give me my epidural. <laughs> I remember, I remember... I remember it being really, really sore, and they were really, really close together, and they were like, okay, we gotta get you out of this tub as fast as we can between contractions. I was able to stand up, and then a contraction hit. Then I was able to step out of the tub, and a contraction hit, and then they're like, okay, go pee. I was able to sit down, had a contraction. Pee, had a contraction. Get back up, have a contraction. Walk a few steps, had another contraction. They were just like on top of each other. 
and I was squeezing you and squeezing those combs and ah, oh, oh, like okay. trying to whine or moan. Yeah. What do you call low? Trying to be lower, and I was going oh, ow. Oh. <laughs> Finally, the anesthesiologist came in to get the epidural, and it it was lovely. <laughs> they checked me again. They said that I was. Seven, seven or eight by the eight. time that... It was eight at that point. Which eight to ten is when transition is. So I had, Now that I've been to that point, I wish that I had just pushed through it because I could feel that it was getting to transition. I could feel that it was different. And if I had just... Pushed a little pushed bit more? Pushed a little bit longer. I think that she would have come a lot faster than she did. So the epidural started to work and things slowed down. We kind of sat around for like three hours. Mm -hmm. We watched a movie. You fell asleep. And I took a nap. And then they came in and they were like, well, it looks like she's uh, pretty close there. I wanted to wait till it was like time, really time to go. They said they would give us a half hour to just kind of prepare ourselves for the main event. The arrival. Came back about a half hour later. It was time to just see if we could get her moving a little bit. So I think we started pushing around 8 something and she was born at 10. So okay, so about, about, two, hours a, about two hours. I was so nervous I remember asking them like, is it, is it doing anything? I couldn't feel Oh boy, baby girl. So I remember, yeah, they saw the head and then they said, okay, stop, 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 stop pushing, stop pushing, just stop pushing. And I was crying. I'll keep her occupied. Okay. But the midwife said, um, okay, I guess not. And I remember her watching. She grabs her gloves. All right, I'm going to catch this baby. I didn't have to do anything at that point. She just came right out and she was crying. I believe she swallowed some meconium, but they got that out. She pooped a whole lot. She was just pooping and pooping and pooping and pooping. They weighed her and said, oh, she probably weighed more than this because she pooped out a whole lot. And I was very grateful because she she was healthy. There were no complications for her. She was able to just come on my chest. We got to do skin to skin that golden hour just together as a family. We were able to enjoy that together. After my first birth, which was very scary, my son had to be taken to the NICU right after he was born. You know, I held him for maybe a few minutes at the most and then they had to take him away. This was really wonderful to be able to have that time with my baby. My baby did not have jaundice. Her jaundice levels were great. All of her newborn screenings were great. We were able to go home not the next day because she was born so late at night. She was born at 10.09 p.m. We spent two nights there and the very next morning, Monday morning, we made the long drive home. She did great driving home she met her brother actually she met her brother at the hospital and, and the first wait thing... what did hold on a sec <laughs> what did daniel say to miss isla here the first time he met yeah her, he said mama put her back <laughs> <laughs> but even though he said that he absolutely adores her he loves to give her hugs and kisses yeah she's smiling at him yeah. i'm smiling no, she's smiling yeah. at Daniel. She's looking she, at me. No, she's looking at Daniel. It's okay. Come. Daniel, you want to come and be in the picture of our family? Oh. That was the story. Oh. We had a wonderful experience. Oh. It was really wonderful. Be patient. You know how to be patient, right? Just be patient. You could do it. Kootenai Clinic OBGYN Midwives. They were wonderful. Yeah. Highly, highly recommend if you are in North Idaho and having a baby. The hospital was Kootenai, Amazing. Kootenai Health. That was Awesome. They were wonderful as well. Everyone it's really there was clean, really clean, really organized. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew what was going on, and so we're so happy that we were able to go down there. Yeah. And have they this took... little baby girl. Yep. They took great care of us and baby, <clears throat> and we are all healthy and happy and home and recovered for the most part. And on to the next Mommy, stage of yeah. our family trying to figure out this new dynamic. Say cheese. cheese. 
So yeah, this is our happy family. We hope that you guys will just follow along on the journey with us. There's so much that our family is about. Our whole life is essentially farming and doing what we love to do. And part of that is right now we're building the house. I'm building this house and recording it all. But we do all the same stuff that we do every single day, which is working with our animals. Mm -hmm. Yep. And our gardens. Yep, and gardens. Our preserving, our cooking, dealing with our family, our kids. Just part of this homestead lifestyle that we love. And so, mm -hmm. homesteading mama homesteading. right here. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed it. B, Sam, Isla, Daniel. He's over there. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button, the notification it's bell. Make sure, like Daniel said, make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button, the notification bell. All those things that you're supposed to do when you watch a video that you like on YouTube. Can you say, hit the buttons? Hit the buttons. Yeah, which button? Yeah? Red. The red, red button? Yeah, the subscribe button no, is, is red. red. You're right. You're, you know YouTube better than everybody else. Say. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys later. Till next time.